Hey everybody, today I got Andrew in for Bill. Bill's still out hurt, but today what we're talking about is, Andrew, what we're talking about today is, remember, are the glory days for Florida over with, okay? Everybody, remember when we were growing up in New York and we had that Coliseum, NASA Coliseum, and they used to have the conventions. The Florida conventions. Yeah, to go, hey, that's, go and move to Florida. That's and how I bought my house here. Yeah. You go, to, you go to the Coliseum and there was row after row of people, you know, selling it. Yep. I mean, everybody I knew wanted to move to Florida. It was like the thing. Okay, we're going to retire. We're moving to Florida. You know, and it's not just New York. It was Jersey, Connecticut, the Midwest. I talked to people when I lived out there, even California. People were saying, you know what? I'm going to leave here and I'm going to move to Florida. And I guess what my question to you is, what we're going to talk about today is, are those glory days, is the boom over with? Because right now, because of these hurricanes, I've talked to probably... 10 people, and I'm talking about when I say I talk to them, I had discussions with them more than five minutes. And they're saying they're leaving Florida, okay, because of the hurricanes. Okay. So do you think the boom days and the glory days of Florida are behind us and Florida is going to be a whole new kind of place? I kind of do, um, but on a, in a different way. I don't think, you know, we're not going to get the, the, the giant influxes. Now you're going to get the people who understand it, can afford it. Oh, and I'm going to tell you what Florida's, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, go ahead, to say what you're going to say about it. I'm going to tell you at the end of this video, so stay to the end of the video, who are the people are going to be going to be living in Florida yeah. in five years from now? Not even a long time ago, five it's years gonna from be now. A, it's definitely going to be a different type of person living here. Um, it's not going to be, I don't, I don't want to use the term happy-go-lucky kind of person, because that's what most people thought, coming to Florida is a yeah. party, you yeah. know, and it's beautiful, it's warm all the time, we're swimming and surfing and Look fishing. We're, we're, we're like, what, November almost? Yeah, and it is uh, 86 degrees. Anyways, Andrew, before we get started on that, do me a favor, if you like this kind of kind of consider subscribing and give it a thumbs up, share, and it's greatly appreciated. We're trying to grow the channel, and with you guys, we'll do it. So, Andrew, I'm not trying to be negative about Florida. Okay, let me get that straight. Florida, I lived in many states, and Florida, I think, is the best state for me. Each state is different for each person. Correct. Okay? But there's a lot, a lot of benefits, and I could do many videos of all the benefits of living in Florida, but I think a lot of people will experience that on their own when they do move here. But we need to talk to people about what's going on in Florida before they move here, because maybe that is too much for them. Well, see, and those would be some of the, let's just call them negatives just for an, an argument's sake. And those negatives can be extremely costly. So people could come here without realizing, just like with a hurricane, you know, your roof could get destroyed. And to put a new roof on is eighteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. That's really going to hurt someone's bottom line. All right, so, so let's, things let's, are going to let's go. Let's go down the list of a few things. now. Florida le led the way in inflation during, you know, when inflation was out of control. I still think inflation is out of control, but, but at the peak of it, Florida, I think, was the most inflationary state out of all the states. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Yeah, it's true. It, it was it, Florida, freaking inflation. Everything cost so much. The prices of houses pretty much doubled in some areas. Now, you're talking basically from COVID times, right? From COVID times, yeah. When After COVID, you know, when, when inflation was hitting and everything was... Things here got stupid. Like, now, before I would go out to breakfast, me and Tanya would go out to breakfast, it'd be like 21 22 Now I can't find a breakfast cheaper than 40 bucks. And I'm talking about a couple of eggs, bacon, and toast. Uh, that, that, put a, that I 100% agree with. Where, like, you know, even going to McDonald's is, like insanely expensive and i mean it's expensive all over the country but florida used to be the place where you could get a big mac fries and a coke for five well, mcdonald's got in so much trouble and and and, and mcdonald's start, and mcdonald's started losing you know mcdonald's started losing people you know clients customers because it was just too expensive it was cheaper to go to a restaurant and cook at home so now that's why they br they brought back you know the five dollar meal you know yeah they, they brought it back on some things because 
they knew they were pricing everybody out and people reach a point and they just can't afford it. So is Florida cheaper than California in New York? Maybe in a sense. In in certain areas, yes. And in a lot of other things, no. I mean, gas is more expensive in like New York and California. Food is definitely more expensive. Houses are more expensive. Um, but and and even in New York, like just insurances and taxes on a house are more expensive. But car insurance in Florida is through the ceiling. Oh, it's stupid. It's insanely high. It's and stupid. It's higher than New York, I think, and it's definitely higher than California. So Florida, you know what it is? Florida had, because of that whole COVID scenario, had like um, a Florida 2.0, you know, where it's like all of a sudden people could raise the prices of everything. And you want to call it price gouging? Be my guest. Because something's literally doubled and tripled in price. All right. So let's talk about the next one. So do you think Florida is losing its appeal because of the number of disasters that we were having? So my two cents is... Living on the coast is losing its appeal. And we're gonna do more videos on living on the coast because I think people really need to know the reality of living on the coast. Oh, without a doubt. Okay, without a doubt. you know, yeah, we're on the coast right now. We're on my property and it's on the water, but I already know that, you know, with my house here, you know, the storms are gonna hit. I'm gonna to have to evacuate. I already know that, I accepted it. But if you're coming from states that you don't deal with hurricanes and stuff, Oh, you're in for a huge you're in, shock. Yeah, a huge shock. So I think the appeal of living along the water, even the East Coast, West Coast, the Carolinas, you know, every, Panhandle, you know. Well, people like here, it's like, all right, we're just a couple of hundred yards off the Gulf of Mexico here. Right. You know, I mean, literally. And like and a lot of these houses here, they're older. They were built in the 60s and the 70s and they're not prepared for stuff. Because, like, when we had Sandy, and when Sandy hit New York and Long Island, granted, yeah, we had eight feet of water walk through. But the last time that happened was way before I was ever around. And it really hasn't happened since. They've had some flooding where, me, you know, six inches, five inches. But here in Florida, you could get every year two, three, four, five hurricanes coming through. And every one of them could bring eight, 10, 15 feet of water. Yeah, one and, after, literally one after but another. But don't don't you agree that one of the reasons they're losing their appeal is because these storms are getting more powerful? At least it feels that way. They're getting more powerful. Well, they they we are getting more powerful ones, and they're becoming closer together too. Like, it feels that think, way, yeah, right? And, yeah. And people are going to say, "Well, no, it's we always had hurricanes," and I agree, we always had hurricanes. But now they seem like they're barreling down right on top of you. But here's here's the problem why the hurricanes are more devastating. Not only, not only do I feel they're more powerful, but they're piling people on top of people. Like everything is so much more congested. Oh yeah. You know, like just ten years ago, we had you know space to breathe. Now in Florida, the way they're building, they're like, oh, instead of having you know a hundred feet between houses, let's give them eight feet between I, houses. I hundred percent agree. 100%. So now they fit a lot more people in a small area. So, yeah, so if a storm hits, it's a lot more devastating because you not only have to worry about your debris hitting your house, you have to worry about your next door neighbor's house debris on, hitting on your house. On both sides of you. Yeah. Yeah, and they're worrying about you hitting them. So it's like it's like a domino effect going right down the block. And it's totally true. Like on your lot here, you if someone was to, a contractor was to take this, I wouldn't be surprised if he tried to fit three houses on your lot. Well, that's why I bought both of them because uh, because I don't I want space between them and yeah. and I and I know here they can't develop more land because I'm on the water. All right, so let's talk about the next thing. Okay, the other thing that's losing an appeal, and I know two people in particular that aren't moving to Florida because of homeowners insurance or car insurance. And very high. Let's talk about car insurance a little bit for, okay. for like up in New York, you would say, hey, yeah, your car insurance is thirty five hundred dollars a year or three grand a year, you know. But over here in Florida, what I notice lately is people are talking about what's your insurance every six months or every year? That's not how they say it anymore here. What's your monthly payment on car insurance? That's the new saying. And it kind of sounds weird because I would just write a check for the year and not worry about it for a year. Well, uh, now I have State Farm. Okay. And I've had this conversation with my insurance broker. Okay. Here. And, you know, they, she, I asked her when I went, I was like, what, what is it, what's the plan for the year? And she told me that we can only give you a quote for six months. 
right? And I was like, what do you mean for six months? I'm like, I, well, I couldn't even pay for the year. Say it was a, th in, now my insurance is $179 a month. But it's crazy that you even know that's $179 yep. a on month. A, on a 2024 Kia Telluride, fully loaded, $179 but a month. But it's just, it's just to me, it's weird that you're going like, hey, okay, I got a monthly because payment. Because that's how it comes up on, the, on the, the State Farm app. But when I asked her, I said, why can't I just pay? Like, let's just, to make numbers even, just say it was $1,200 for the year, meaning like if I paid $100 a month. I was like, so why can't I just pay you $1,200 right now for the whole year? And I don't have to worry about it till say next January 1st attitude. And she said, because in six months, they're probably going to raise your rate. Because they have it figured out that my six months is like January to the end of like June, first mm -hmm. week of uh, July. And then July through like into December. And they know that in that second half, meaning the hurricane season, things are going to happen. So they say, oh, you know, like you now granted, I don't have any claims in on anything. But people around here who lost their car are putting the claim in, so they go and they raise the rate in the second half, and they can they can get away with doing that. I just read an article today on how State Farm has been funneling the profits of the State Farm insurance into their parent company, whatever. And I don't know the name of the parent company, and that's how they're getting away with also raising rates because they well, say they're not Well, verify that money. because we're not insurance people. I right. pull it right up. No, on the it's all right. It's all right. That's why I read it. <laughs> just, just Apple ver news. Yeah, just verify all that information uh, with those facts. Um, so, but here's the other thing. So, so it's auto insurance, but it's homeowners insurance too. Well, think of it. It you, you need a little bit more. Like if so. You won't have a mortgage here, so you don't have to get flood insurance. Right. So I'm going what's called a la carte, fire, theft, and liability, because, but if you have a mortgage, you, you ha have to have the flood insurance. You have to have the and flood that's insurance. Almost, on the that's basically a separate policy yeah. that could run you $1,500, $2,000, 3000 a month. 6000 a year. It's insane. And I'm 18 feet up in the air, so if this house floods... The whole state of Florida is underwater if your house gets yeah, water. So, your house gets an inch of water in it. So, it, you know, Florida lost its appeal just because of homeowner's insurance and car insurance. So that's, that's you know. Yeah, I, the car insurance, I was in shock. I was paying in, I was only in New York for two years. With my, I had the same truck from L.A. to New York. And when I was in L.A., I had a 2022 Ford Explorer, and I was paying... Fourteen ninety five a year for for one hundred three hundred limits like top of the line limits. California is fairly cheap car insurance, um, and then when I went to New York, I changed the plates and it went to thirty eight hundred. Mm. And I was like, I thought something was wrong. So, so here was here was a big um, draw. A lot of people came to uh, Florida is because Florida doesn't have an income tax, but. You pay tax on everything else. You pay tax on everything else, and the property taxes aren't cheap here. So if you bought your house a long time ago, yeah, you might be paying $3,000 a year in property taxes, but if you buy the same house now and you pay the current value, those taxes could go from $3,000 to $10,000. What, what does, does Florida's tax work on a percentage of what the purchase price is? Yeah, on the, on the purchase price and the assessed value. The assessed value, okay. Yeah. Because when I bought my house, I was paying practically nothing, and I still am, but because Because I you're a homestead, yeah, because yeah. you were a homestead, yep. and it, it, there's a 3% cap every year. But if you sold that house today, and say you sold it hypothetically, say you paid 100000 for it, I'm just throwing out numbers, and say you're paying $2,000 a year. Now, the same person who buys that house... And say they pay five hundred thousand for it, they'll probably be paying six to seven seven thousand a year. Yeah, and, and that's just the for tax. the same ex for the same exact house. And I'm I say this in almost every video when I talk about this subject is, I feel that if you reach a certain point of property taxes and insurance, then what you're is renting? You're renting. Yeah, you're renting. You're renting, you're renting from, from the, the yeah, from state, the government, like, state, whatever you want county. to look at it. Yeah, because yeah. And, and if you don't pay that. You're getting kicked out of yeah, your own house. They'll take, they will literally take the whole house. Yeah. And still send you the bill. Yeah. Another incentive that, you know, was really big during the COVID days was people couldn't, a lot of people moved here because they can remote work. Yeah. And re remote work is, it's changing back to where they want people in the office. But that's kind of crazy because 
you're going to have a hard time doing that. And l let's be honest, a lot of these companies, you don't need people in the office for. But know. a lot of companies are forcing them back. And you, you have to admit, OK, that the New York job market pays better than the Florida job market. Oh, put it this way. And the California job market pays better than the Florida job market. Yep. So Florida, during the COVID days, when everybody could remote work, yes, there was a there was a better incentive to move to Florida. Yeah, but you were saving on gas and food and time, you know, so and you, have, and, out. and you don't have to worry about snow and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. But now the remote work, is, you know, is pretty much disappearing. So that incentive of moving the lure of moving to Florida. But th and that's the weird thing. I don't understand why that's disappearing because you. But it is. I, it, it makes no sense because most jobs are all paper jobs. Meaning like, you know, you're in, doing insurance or you're working for a stock firm. You know, it's a lot of computer stuff that everything can go around. I can understand you're a doctor, you're a cop, you're a fireman, you're a school teacher. You have to go in. You work for Amazon, you got to go into in. I understand those things, but there are a lot of jobs you don't need to. And it's just, I, I don't know, it's just weird. All right. At the beginning of this video, I said what type of people that are going to live here five years from now. And... Believe it or not, it's not going to be retired people. No, it's not. It's okay. not going to be retired people. Florida is not the capital of retirement anymore. A lot of the retirees, people that are retiring in Florida, a lot of them that I know are moving to Tennessee, Georgia, South Carolina. They're moving. To Alabama. Yeah, they're moving to yeah. Alabama. They're moving to other states. Yeah. So it's not going to be the retirement. The people that are going to be moving here is people with money. It'll it'll be young younger people coming in. Uh, maybe, maybe they're starting families. But they'll be but professionals. They're going like to be professionals. That, money. And I'm not talking about making 80000 or 100000 I'm talking about people making over 200000 Oh, yeah. They're going to be making two, three, four hundred thousand. It's going to be like, you know. But here's what's finance. going to happen. It's going to draw prices up because the, the locals that are getting pushed out, in order for them to stay, you got to pay them pretty well. Because, like, I said the story a few times. I go to Miami. And I'm in restaurants and, you know, I'm not getting help. And they're like, yeah, we can't find help because the neighborhood where the restaurant is, it is so expensive to live there that they can't find helpers. I understand. That. That's a double edged sword, that one. Yeah, it, it is a double edged sword. But that's that's the conclusion. Five years from now, you got to be rich. You got to have money and you have to be OK with storms and natural disasters because I'm going to do a video on this. But is Florida becoming the capital of natural disasters now? Well, that's we're gonna do a whole, we're gonna we're gonna do a whole video on that and it's, talk it's about higher it. than fifty percent. Let's put it that way. You yeah. Know? So when you hear natural disaster, does your mind automatically think Florida? Anyways, that's today's video. Do me a favor, check out this video over here. I picked it out just for you guys, and <laughs> do me a favor, subscribe. It takes a second. Hit that button down there. Hit the like and share, and we'll talk to you in the next one. Thank you, and See have ya. a great day.